On your mark, get fit, go. It's time to win your race. Dr. Ben Lerner is a chiropractor, nutritionist, and fitness trainer. His breakthrough strategies are part of a growing movement to transform the way we approach healthcare. Dr. Lerner began his practice in 1994, and years later, he co-founded Maximize Living, a transforming health and wellness program. Often educating audiences on health and creating resources, Dr. Lerner has authored several New York Times best-selling books on health, and he's the chairman of the Wellness Advisory Council for Sports. A former All-American wrestler, he frequently consults with Olympic teams optimizing peak performance health. From Florida, please welcome Dr. Ben Lerner. to be here. Health and winning your race, that is something that's been a passion for you for as long as I've known you. Yeah, I can tell you it's been a, a ministry for me ever since my dad had died. Uh, so he died at 50 years old of a heart attack. And I realized that this was something the whole world needed to get better at and set out on a journey to make sure it didn't happen to other families. And uh, it's been, a, been a, quite a ride. Wow. A lot of people don't really spend time getting healthy. We probably spend more time fixing our car, getting oil changes, kicking the tires, than actually looking after ourselves. Would you agree with that? Yes, and it, it takes so little time, you know, with a little preparation of food, with the 12 minutes we teach and how to get in the shape of your life a day, so it's not a lot of time invested. You can be in great shape, you can be healthy, you can avoid most every major disease with just uh, paying a little more attention to your body than you would your, your car or your bicycle. You know, a lot of people kind of think like life's got a lot of sickness, a lot of disease, it's kind of a, a crapshoot, you never know, you know, roll the dice. But actually, that's not true. You just made a comment that's very pretty bold. You can avoid most major diseases just by some simple things. Yeah, and that's, I think people think it's really complicated. And yeah. I guess if I make it really complicated and you have to pay me a lot of money to uncomplicate it for you, but it really isn't. There's a, a new cancer study that was done and they found that just by addressing things like getting more fruits and vegetables, getting some exercise, cutting back on alcohol, not smoking, basic things, getting some rest, you would literally wipe out one third of all cancers off the planet by just making those basic changes. Hey, you made a comment earlier as well, something about a 12 minute workout. Like, and that's it. Well, every person I see, usually around me that's in shape, brags about this two hour, every day, bottom, two hour, top, you know, upper body, lower body, then cardio, and the, I mean, it's so complex, it turns you off, listen to them. You're saying 12 minutes a day. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really a hormonal battle, especially as you get older, so I'm starting to push 50, but I'm actually in better shape than I was when I was an all-American wrestler in college, learning how to overcome hormones. And so as you age, testosterone goes down, uh, estrogen gets out of balance, and you become more of this kind of fat building, muscle burning machine that we don't wanna be. But by doing these quick surges of exercise, what they call burst training, or you see uh, places like CrossFit, we have a program called Max T3, where you do it, an intense, short blast of exercise, a little bit of rest, do it again, and if you do this 12 times, essentially like a minute on, minute off, you're actually increasing the good hormones so your body gets in better shape faster but also stays that way because if the hormones are up that are the good hormones, the HGH, the testosterone, the ones we want, you not only get in shape from your workout, you actually stay that way. All right, talk me through a little bit of that because everyone is excited now just hearing this. <laughs> yeah. So 12 minutes, what would you do for 12 minutes? Like what, punch something? Well, or? so like this morning, you know, I'm here in Winnipeg in the hotel, all I had to do is I, I, I dropped, I did a minute of burpees, took about 20 seconds of rest, did another minute, and I repeated that burpees. 12 times. Now burpees, not everybody's favorite exercise. <laughs> so you're, you're essentially dropping to the floor, do a push up, and jump up. Okay. And so it's, it's this thing you just repeat over and over again, again for a minute at a time. And by the time you're done, you don't want to do any more than 12 minutes. I was plenty happy with my 12 minutes but what it does is it changes your physiology so that you not only got something from the workout, you continue to thrive as a result of it. Well, I heard someone just the other day, we were talking about working out and you just get your pulse up to 134, I think he was saying, and you don't get it past that, because if you do, you're not gonna lose any weight. What about that? 
Well, uh, first of all, that's you know kind of the boring exercise people hate. So when people think <laughs> yeah. I don't want to exercise yep. or think I don't want to be stuck in that treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour, they call that low intensity, long duration exercise. And actually, while any, any movement's good, so you applaud anybody that's gonna walk yeah. or do anything, but at the same time, while you are helping yourself cardiovascularly, while you're doing it, you're also raising cortisol or bad hormones. So the side effect long-term is actually the body goes into that state once again where you're breaking down muscle, building up fat. And so not only did you hate it, but long-term it may not even be doing you the good you'd like it to be doing. And I've noticed that as men get older, you know, they're wedge-shaped. You can just tell they're, 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 they're sharp, they're in good shape. And then they start going pear-shaped. <laughs> they get heavier in the bottom half, you know, and, yeah. and, and, they, and it's like, doesn't matter what they do, they haven't changed that much. That's got to be just hormones. Yeah, men, unfortunately, age catches up with men actually worse than it does women. So our hearts tend to break down, which is why men are more likely to have a heart attack earlier than women are. Our bodies tend to fall apart faster than women do. I thought it was yeah. men had more stress. <laughs> it could be that too. Stress <laughs> no. is not great on your hormones. But, the, the, but ultimately, it doesn't have to be that way. So there's no doubt that time will play havoc with your hormones and your body and your heart and everything else. But at the same time, if you exercise, particularly if you do it the way we're talking about, if you take care of yourself, you're not destined. The whole idea of genes, like you're cursed to somehow age and be unhealthy and get heart disease and cancer and be shaped like a pear, that, that's a, maybe a genetic tendency or what would happen if you did nothing. But if you actually change your lifestyle, again, make some of these simple changes that anybody can do, you can actually change your genetic future. You can turn off bad genetics, turn on good ones, and end up in great shape and, and aging gracefully, or at least not so fast. Okay, you just said something kind of different. We can turn off genetics. We all kind of think that whatever our dads and grandpas and grandmas look like, we're going to, because it's all in the genes. You're saying no? Yeah, and that, the idea that genes destine you like you're yeah. some sort of Old Testament curse for bad health <laughs> yeah. is actually not the science of genes. So different things you do with your lifestyle, something called epigenetics. There's things that sort of live above genetics that turn genes on and off based on the food you're eating, the choices you're making, the stress you might be under, uh, toxins you're exposed to. There's a lot you can do to change genetics and overcome what your parents suffered from. So my dad, again, died at 50. I'm almost 50 also. I have his same genes, but he was 50 pounds heavier than I was. Uh, he had smoked, he didn't take care of himself, was very stressed. So his, he had a completely different health picture than I do as a result of what he did with his genes versus what I've done with those same genes. Do you think it's the same way with disease then? Because I've heard a lot of guys who are really worried because there's diseases that their parents had, then an uncle had it, and a grandpa, and they find it amongst, let's say, for example, the men in their family, and they're convinced that this is their lot in life. For disease as well, you're saying that that, because you're saying it can be turned off and on, then it probably has an impact on disease too. Yeah, the, the best way to look at that is genes are kind of like a trigger on a gun. So if you have a genetic tendency to have breast cancer in the family or, or heart disease or high cholesterol, any of those things, sure, if you live that same lifestyle, you may likely pull those same triggers and go down that same path. But if you live differently and you think differently, then you don't have to experience that same outcome. And so we do know scientifically that if you actually look at genes, while again, those tendencies may be there, and if you find that gene, for example, that that woman found that caused her to remove all her female organs, then yeah, there is, a, again, a greater likelihood if you do nothing to end up going down that same road, but rather you could just choose a very positive, healthy lifestyle and, and go that direction and get to be whole in everything God created you to be. If you really look at each of our families, we each do different things. Some can be really stressful, always stressed out. But you, you almost grow up learning to complain, be upset all the time, fighting all the time. Yeah, it's likely not this little code of DNA in the system that's the issue. It's that I not only inherited my parents' genes, I, exactly like you said, I could inherit their way of living, their way of thinking, all their stress. And so the, the best thing to do is, you know, there's actually another way to look at it too. They say the reason kids get old and unhealthy or people end up old and unhealthy is that when you're little, you ask your mom, hey, why is that man in a wheelchair? And, and she says, oh, that's because um, he's old. 
and you're saying, well, just want to know what I'm going to look like when I'm old. But I do a lot of marathons and triathlons. And when you go the, to these races, you see people in their 80s and 90s, even 100, doing a triathlon, a marathon, uh, an Ironman. And then I'd rather say, great, I just want to know what I'm going to look like when I'm 80 or 90 or 100. <laughs> That's very cool. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, I'd like to keep talking about this. And I want to talk a little bit about beliefs, because I wonder where that fits into this. We'll be right back with Dr. Ben Lerner. Fat actually is better for your heart. The, the low fat era was one of the worst things to ever happen to our hearts. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Ben Lerner, the author of The Genesis Factor. Now, we're talking about beliefs. What we're thinking has a huge input in our belief systems on what we're doing. Yeah, and you see it. There's a great story in the Bible that illustrates this. In John 5, Jesus finds a man that's been laying by the pool for 38 years uh, crippled. And he actually asked the man, do you want to get well? Which is kind of a funny question. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, because obviously he's been crippled for 38 years. And rather than saying yes, he actually complains about the healthcare system. You know, says, <laughs> well, you know, there's this whole system I can't seem to get a break from. And what Jesus is actually asking is, you know, are you committed to being restored whole? Yeah. And so it's, it's a big ask. And the person, frankly, just didn't believe that he could do it. And so faith has a lot to do with whether or not we believe we can get better, whether we believe we can live a certain lifestyle. When I teach somebody about exercise or I'm doing a class on nutrition, a lot of what you're fighting is somebody's past where they're thinking, man, I've quit on every diet. That food sounds like it'd be like rabbit food and tastes terrible. I hate to exercise. It takes too long or I don't have the time for it or, or I have a bad foot. 
you know, th these are the excuses you're dealing with. And so that, that shift in belief can make an enormous difference as to whether or not somebody becomes the next miracle story we're talking about in our books or in our programs, or whether it's somebody who goes home and just kind of goes back to their old lifestyle. Those of you who are doctors and staying current with all the newest research, I think you guys see that, believe it, operate that way. But a lot of us still have stuck in our head all the DNA stuff that we're going to tell you the year you die. They were saying that you're going to tell you the year you yeah. die, the disease you die from, which organs are going to break down to cause you to die. And it just gave everyone such a fatalistic look at life. And now they're saying none of that is that. There might be like a predisposition, but you can change almost anything. Yeah, and, and I mean, God knows the number of our days, and we have a hope and a future. And, and I like to think that's the case. And what's awesome is science backs that up. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, cancer is that we we wrote a book called The Cancer Killers, and a good friend of mine, Dr. Charles Majors, was my co-author, and it started when I was in a hospital room with him, present when the doctor walked in and said, uh, "You have no chance of making it. You have tumors that have gone to the brain. It's a, it's a bone marrow cancer. Uh, you're done." And we sat there and said, "You know what? We don't accept that." And we went down a road of, of restoring his health. And now five years later, where he was supposed to only make it about another six weeks to six months, five years later, he's one of the fittest, healthiest guys you've ever seen. And so they may say, yeah, there's, there was this genetic predisposition, but there really is always hope for restoration. And that's that genesis factor really is when Jesus says, do you want to get well? It's, he's using the term genestai hugies, which is, would you like to be restored whole? You know, Genestai from Genesis, would you like to be made new? And so in him, with the right approach, aligning your lifestyle with God's intentions, virtually anything is possible. There's always hope. You know, as a pastor, I, I watch people believing God for miracles all the time. And I, we all love the miraculous. And when we need a miracle, is a big issue on getting a miracle. But when it comes to healings, like uh, physical healings, I'm praying, I'm believing God for healing of cancer. I'm believing God to you know, restore my pancreas, get rid of diabetes. I've actually seen a ton of people getting a miracle, but then they think they're losing it because it comes back. And they'll use terms like, you know, I lost my miracle, or I guess it didn't take. And one of the things I noticed over the years is they went back to all of the same bad habits they had that I think got it there. I mean, one person never drank any water ever, but would literally go through four uh, pots of coffee in a day, wouldn't eat good food. And when they got healed and God did touch them, which was pretty cool, uh, they went back to their how many pots of coffee a day with no real nutrition or f and no water, et cetera. And so I think what you're saying makes so much sense. We need, I'm, I'm all for praying for miracles, but I really believe that there is this part that we've got to play in looking after this body God gave us. Yeah, a perfect prayer we say is where you, you pray and expect God to do everything and completely heal you, but you also begin to align your life with these physical realities that God has set up. And I, I look at it like this. If you got to the top of a 10-story building and prayed to God to catch you and then you jumped, <laughs> He can do anything, and he may just catch you, and you hear these stories, the parachute didn't open, and the person drops in unscathed, but more than likely, you'll run into laws of physics that he set up himself. So there's the law of terminal velocity, which is 122 miles per hour that you'll reach in about three seconds, and you also find out when your physical matter hits this immovable force called the ground, and what happens to your particles as a result. In fact, you'll get to go ask God personally <laughs> yeah. why he didn't catch you. <laughs> exactly. And he's going to say, well, you know, I gave you a, a brain and an eighth grade physics teacher dummy to teach you yep. about these laws. And it really is the same with our body, that there are certain nutrients it needs. Uh, like you said, it, it, we're not designed to live off coffee. Our body is made of mostly water. We need good, clean fluids. You know, we have a spine that needs to be healthy so the nerves can allow the body to function. We need to exercise and move. If we don't follow those certain laws and rules of the body, it's really not that much different than jumping off a building expecting us to be healthy anyways. Well, another common thing that I hear from people is they have an injury, and because of the injury, they can't, you know, it's their knees, it's their back, it's something that brings so much pain to them that they can no longer work out, go for walks, get healthy. What do you say to people? There's, I meet a lot of those kinds of people. Yeah, that is a constant 
excuse people will give for not exercising is some part isn't working so well or something hurts yeah. really bad. You know, one is you'd be surprised because we work with, the, with Olympic teams, we work with professional teams. How many injuries come from these very inflammatory, high carb type of diets? And so their body's got so much inflammation that things hurt that really wouldn't if we got them on a better nutrition plan. So that, that's one thing we address. But the other is there's always something you can do. Again, with this sort of 12 minute type of exercise we teach, this Max T3, it's just about getting your heart rate up for short periods of time so your body can respond by building good hormones, building muscle, um, exchanging fat for muscle, you know, just like we want. So there's always something everybody can do right. uh, to get their heart rate up and to change their physiology. So we just want to find what's the best way to do that despite what hurts. You made a comment in some of your material, and I forget where I read it, that really over time, when it comes to eating right, the low carb diets are heart healthier for people. Uh, talk to me a little bit about just diets in general, some of your opinions, because I mean, you are a reader, you're prolific at this, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, and I know this sounds crazy to people, but actually the science is, not only has, the, has it caught up, but even the government is changing its position on the fact that fat actually is better for your heart. The, the low fat era was one of the worst things to ever happen to our hearts. Cardiovascular disease went through the roof when they said, hey, cut out the fat, it's bad for your heart. In fact, Tulane just did a study, and it's a study that's been accepted by the American government, showing that by doing low carb and higher fat, you had a better chance at losing weight when compared to all the other diets, people lost an average of 7.7 .7 pounds more than the people on more of that kind of high grain, typical uh, diet of low fat. The other thing is that actually people on high fat diets had their very low density lipoproteins, the really bad tiny cholesterol, goes way down and the HDL, the good cholesterol, goes way up. So again, it sounds crazy. How yeah. am I eating fat and seeing that happen? But you're losing more weight and your heart's getting healthier on a higher fat, lower carb diet. So when someone picks up the book, The Genesis Factor, what, were you, what was your purpose in writing that? What, what can they expect when they get into that? Well, the idea of the factor is, was this idea of hope, that there's something in you that Jesus knew was in this man lying there for 38 years by the pool that can be restored, that no matter where you think you are today, whether, you, again, you don't think you could lose weight or don't think you'd ever be in shape again or just think you're old or doomed for disease, that that's not true. There is something both spiritually, scientifically, that we know that you can be restored back to good health, and that's what Jesus promised. Would you like to be restored? Genes hugies, made new, a, a new beginning. So that, that was the, the main purpose, but then also to just make it really simple. So just here's a list of the foods to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that are low carb, that are higher in the good fats and the quality proteins, and if you simply just kind of follow this plan, you'd see it's very natural. I like what Jack Lane said, if God didn't make it, I won't eat it. And he was pulling tugboats with his teeth when he was 98 years old and lived to like 180 or something. And so, and it was all based on just a very natural way of living based on God's intentions that's really simple to follow and the promise that we can heal and be healthy and we're not doomed to failure or depression or cancer, uh, you know, like some sort of Old Testament curse or something like that. Right, so it's gonna help you with what you believe because that's crucial. And then you're actually gonna give them help walking through to getting healthy. Right. That sounds awesome. Hey, it was great having you with us, man. Our time is up, but this has been an awesome time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I'm so glad you joined us today. We love bringing you programs that really help people in everyday life. You know, our passion and our purpose is to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, many ministries are doing that. Why are we so ineffective, especially in North America? I believe so much of it has become religious, so much of it has become legalistic, and we call it spirit 
contemporary. We want it to be spiritually alive, potent, amazing, miraculous, but yet we want it to come across in a contemporary, relevant, cool way. So we call it Spirit Contemporary. We need you to help us. The time is, it's urgent right now that around this planet, we present the gospel in a way that touches every emerging generation. We cannot keep losing our kids and our grandkids. We must be able to communicate Jesus, the powerful principles of the gospel in a way that they get it and they come on board. We would love to have you join us. Become a part of this family. You know, for $45 or more as a gift, we want to send you this series called Dreams calling and purpose. So many people get these three all mixed up. What's the difference between your dream, your calling, your purpose? They all overlap, but there are powerful indicators as to what you should be doing with your life. And we would love to send this to you. We need partners. We need people to become a part of this family and help us take the gospel around the planet. One of the things we're doing as well is taking and translating this devotional, which we want to send you as well, into a bunch of languages. I've got a list here of the ones that we are already in, English, French, Spanish, Urdu. Uh, we are in Russian, Indonesian, Mandarin. And there's more that we're working on right now because we want to begin to touch every people group. Your gift today is going to see people come to know Jesus, not just in the English speaking world, but places where Muslims need to know Jesus, Hindus need to know Jesus, in places where it's hard for the gospel so far to really take root. We're seeing the spirit contemporary gospel of Jesus Christ changing lives. Go to the phone right now. Call us today. We'd love to have you be a part of what God is doing. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on Islamic television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Robbie Dawkins and Leon discuss what it means to be courageous and rise above your feelings to the promises of God. And that's where we've missed it. Very well said. Unbelievers get healed faster than believers. Yeah. And it's not because God doesn't like us. It's no. there's a greater demonic opposition against us as believers.